In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us begin by calling to mind our sins, and so preparing ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Christ have, Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading for the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy, rich food and pure, choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day, it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. I will live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I will live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil. For you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You spread a table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil my cup overflows. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus again spoke to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables, saying, 
The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He dispatched his servants to summon the invited guests to the feast, but they refused to come. A second time he sent other servants, saying, Tell those invited, Behold, I have prepared my banquet. My calves and fattened cattle are killed, and everything is ready. Come to the feast. Some ignored the invitation and went away, one to his farm, another to his business. The rest laid hold of his servants, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged and sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his servants, The feast is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy to come. Go out, therefore, into the main roads and invite to the feast whomever you find. The servants went out into the streets and gathered all they found, bad and good alike, and the hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he saw a man there not dressed in a wedding garment. The king said to him, My friend, how is it that you came in here without a wedding garment? But he was reduced to silence. The king said to his attendants, Bind his hands and feet, cast him into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Many are invited, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord. Very warm welcome to, of course, all of our parishioners, any visitors who might be here, and to those who are at home watching the recording, whatever day that happens to be. We know that you are with us in spirit, and we pray for the day where you can be in these pews with us as well. It has been, uh, you know, a challenge to get to know the community. I think any time you're in a new place, in a new community, it always takes a while to get to know everyone and to get to know the different families and the different people who are involved in different ministries. And I think back to my time in three years at the Mission San Diego in Mission Valley, and all the people that I got to know really well who are a part of the community, that the new priest there may not have even had a conversation with due to everything going on in the pandemic and everything. And so I look forward to and appreciate and cherish those little moments that I've had with some of you during these couple months that I've started here at St. Mark's, but I look forward to getting to know the rest of you as well. I love celebrating weddings and um, I just think it's a beautiful joyful time even the couples that I may not have known or been friends with from you know since before I was a priest or while I was in seminary even if it's a couple that I don't know and are meeting for the first time in my office it's something that I love and is really joyful I think it's because you know I've been in a in the wedding party maybe like 13 times. <laughs> there was a commercial a while back for Southwest with this girl who was a bridesmaid and she's like dancing and then it cuts and she's in a different dress at a different wedding, dancing a different dance and it just keeps cutting. And my dad, I, was, I think it was a baseball game we were watching and my dad just looked at me, he's like, that's you, dude. <laughs> he's like, you go to so many weddings. And, um, but it was a lot of fun. So whenever I do a rehearsal, you know, I always, I've lo- I love that experience of being in the wedding party, doing those things behind the scenes to make the day even more special for the couple, for the bride and groom. And, and so they don't have to worry about all these details or little things that may or may not be going according to plan and can be present, enjoy the moment. We'll take care of all that stuff too. I also felt like it was our responsibility to make sure all the rest of the wedding guests, when the couple left at the end of the night, that we continued the celebration going for them, you know? <laughs> so at the rehearsals, I always tell them, you know, it's a great responsibility to be in the wedding party and to help behind the scenes and to continue to celebrate. I was like, you know, I've been a, a groomsman 
you know, 13 times, and three of those times I was the best man. Always the groomsman, never the groom. <laughs> they, they laugh every time at it. But <laughs> This gospel is very challenging, and there is a short form, and a lot of times I choose the short form, but, um, and it was very challenging, the part that it was added, that part at the end, and has always been one that I struggle and wrestle with, that I don't totally wrap my head around, but I think sometimes it's important for all of us to pay attention to those parts of scripture that are challenging for us. And sometimes we might be able to wrap our head around it quickly, or sometimes it's a scripture that we wrestle with for the course of our faith journey, and that's okay. But I think the fact that Jesus is equating over and over, and we see with the first reading, even in the Old Testament, that promise of this banquet, of this feast, and then that Jesus is equating the kingdom of heaven, which is here now in our midst, and something we are looking forward to in heaven as well, that he puts it in the context of a wedding, of a joyful feast, of a celebration, that it's something joyful and the fact at the beginning of this parable, I don't think we should let the very end of the parable distract us from that core message of the beginning that Jesus has invited everyone to the banquet. No longer was that invitation only for the people of Israel, the Israelites, but it's for everyone. Everyone's invited. And it says he even invited the bad and the good. Those who were, not, who were invited weren't worthy, and he invites everyone. Because he wants us to share, he wants everyone to share in that love, in that joy, in that celebration that God feels in his relationship with us. He wants to invite us, not just to be, uh, you know, observers, but he wants us to get engaged in it, to participate in it. And I think there's a lot, I don't, this might resonate with some of you who have been, perhaps have been married, but it resonates with me in my ordination day and different friends of mine who I was able to see get married. But sometimes you, you're just so grateful for all the people who are there this woven tapestry of your whole life. And you realize and recognize that you wouldn't be where you were in this moment without all these people, without all these relationships that helped guide you there. And God has that same dynamic for us. He's, he wants us to share in that. The recognition, the recognition that your wedding day or your ordination day, it's not just about you and what's happening in your life but you're just so grateful for all those people and those relationships you want them to have a blessing a hundredfold the blessing of the day that you're experiencing for yourself and I think we see that part of God's heart for us and wanting us to participate in it but like the gospel from last Sunday with a challenge at the end of the vineyard and being given to new tenants and that challenge that the new vineyard workers, us, that we're called to bear fruit, so too that challenging image of the wedding garment and the person not dressed in the wedding garment, that we are called to bear fruit, that we are called to not just observe and take for granted the, fa take for granted the fact that we've been invited and that we've been chosen to gather around this altar, to share in the banquet, but that God wants us to actively be engaged and share in that love, that we go out and share that love and that joy and that invitation to participate and gather around this banquet to the good and the bad alike.
And so now, brothers and sisters, together as a community of faith, let us stand and profess that very faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so confidently we now offer our concerns to our compassionate God. For the unity of the church, that all believers may share in the feasts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Texas and Louisiana who have been affected by Hurricane Delta, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor in our midst, that they have life through our sharing of resources, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who care for the sick and dying, that they be strengthened in courage and compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially the seriously ill in our parish, Rick Frost, Rosie Aguilara, Desi Herrera, Josefina Diaz, Flora Gallegos, Ethel Foster, Guadalupe Cano, Linda Rodriguez, Ruben Menjares, Felix Arajo, Alex Hugh, Maria Hume, Frank Lovas, Renee Franklin, Pat Quigley, Giovanni Lopez, Rosa Torres, Joyce and Stephen Jones, Gary Malik, all those affected by the pandemic and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially in the recently deceased in our parish, Eloisa Godinez, Maria Torres, John Rhodes, and all those named on our prayer wall, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Lou Iturz Zeta, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these and all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, through Christ our Lord. greatest 
are least The burden find rest And the hungry can feast By love we're invited Here mercy prevails God in your goodness we share A place at your table A place at your table Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of Your faithful with these sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people, formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the church. And so in the company of the choirs of angels and saints, we praise you and with joy we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Robert our Bishop, John and Ramon, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Mark, San Diego, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
And I believe there's an announcement today. I actually remembered this time. The Knights of Columbus will be outside after Mass handing out disaster preparedness bags. It contains all the information you need in case of an emergency. Uh, one bag per family, please. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.